Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. The cross has spoken. Yes. I am forgiven. We are forgiven. The King of kings. Me, his own beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah! Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. Have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came, then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning, then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, the living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. success and joy. Others have experienced challenge and heartache. Some have worked hard at their day jobs. Others are searching for a job to sustain them. Some have poured into their families. Others dream of having a family. Some are starting something new. Others are finishing something old. They may not be us or look like us, but their stories are our stories and their lives are our lives. And they remind us that we've all come from different places and situations. But there is one thing that isn't different about us. There's one area of common ground 
that we can't run away from. All of us, every single person gathered here today, is in desperate need of God. Whether we admit it or not, we all need God desperately. In our highs, in our lows, in our confusion and in our clarity, in our loneliness and our doubt, in our joys and in our sorrows, we're all in desperate need of God. And that's our common ground. That's our universal need. And that's why church is so beautiful. Because when a gathering of people is found at the intersection of diversity and desperation, well, you never know what God might do. As we come together, to uh, quiet our hearts before the Lord this morning. I love what that video just said at the intersection of desperation and diversity. That's where God is able to work. In, around, and through us. And so... In just a moment, I'm going to introduce Leanne Friesen to us to lead us in our time of studying God's Word together and interacting with each other around what God is saying to us. But before we do, let's take a few moments just to quiet our hearts before the Lord. Because this week, as that video has indicated, you know, all of us through the week go through different experiences in our life, some desolations, some things that pull us away from God or just seem so heavy. And then there are other things that are more the highs that are that just draw us closer to God. But, you know, there's those things that hinder and there's those sins that easily entangle us as well and let us just throw off everything as we come before the Lord right now in silence and stillness and allow God to begin to speak to your heart as we prepare ourselves for his word today. Let's pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together today. We thank you for the way that your presence is here. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are walking among us today. This is your lampstand. And Lord, we thank you that we can, we can know that your real-time presence is here with us. 
And Holy Spirit, we thank you for the way that you reside within us, the way you, you speak into us the, the words of life, the way you lead us and guide us. And so, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We thank you for the, the way that you're already beginning to speak to our hearts today through the, the worship uh, that we have expressed to you, through the, the many ways in which we have heard your word proclaimed already, Lord, through the scriptures that have been read. And now, Lord, as we come together to hear the, your word spoken to us, uh, preached, the message that you've put onto Leanne's heart today, Lord, I just pray that you would just give us ears to hear, hearts to understand all that you have for us from you as we gather together today in your presence. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all your good blessings to us. As a congregation, all these 59 years that, that this church has been here as, a, as a, a mission center, Lord, to this community around us, Lord, we just pray that you would help us as we, we celebrate these things together to not lose sight of the fact that you are still at work here. You still have much for us to do to participate with you in, Lord, into the future. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would be our vision today. Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It is my privilege to be able to share with you um, a little bit about uh, Leanne Friesen. Um, Reverend Leanne Friesen is our new executive minister for the, the Canadian Baptists of Ontario in Quebec. She was installed this last June uh, in that role. And um, I, know, I, I, I haven't had a lot of personal uh, encounters with Leanne except at last year's assembly when we were in a, in a, um, a seminar together and uh, we had opportunity to share our hearts and our uh, with each other around the, the things that we were uh, talking about at that point. And I just got this real warmth and enthusiasm and just a real love for the Lord and for his church that just exuded from Leanne. And I know she's creative. I know she was a pastor for many years at Mount Hamilton Baptist Church. And... Um, you know, we are just so excited today. I am excited today to be able to invite Leanne uh, up to share with us uh, a little bit about this Salt Shaker Church. Yeah. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Happy anniversary. Why do you take a moment to say happy anniversary to the people around you? This is a special one. <laughs> Fifty-nine years, that's absolutely wonderful. It's almost at the age that you could call yourself seniors. But we know that this is actually a very young church in many ways, but so much can happen in so many decades. And as Ken said, I love the church, and I'm going to talk about this passage of Scripture today and what I hope it means for you. But I'm going to ask you if you, I, we're going to interact. As Ken said, I absolutely love this. I love how you all gather. That's so incredible. And I'm going to just start and set your tables. Maybe just shout some things out. What's your favorite salty food? Anyone got a favorite salty food? Chips. Anyone else? French fries. Nice. Anyone else have a salty food that they love? Pretzels. Those are good. I'm going to show you mine. Someone here might know this one. I think they might. I grew up in Newfoundland. That's where I'm from. So we've already heard this passage. I just realized I don't have a picture of the food. I thought I put it up there. So I'm going to just tell you about it. That's a funny start. Um, so the food that is salty that I love is called Jig's Dinner. Yeah, JC knows it. So Jig's dinner is a Newfoundland dish, and you use a thing called salted beef. It's this pink meat. It's delicious, actually, and, you, and it's very, very salty. And you cook all the food with the salt beef in a pot for a really long time. So cabbage, turnip, potatoes, and then this salt beef. Now, I love Jig's dinner, um, and it is very salty. You drink water the rest of the day when you have this. A number of years ago, I was a youth pastor, and my church and I went on a mission trip. I promise it was a mission trip to the Bahamas. 
And we partnered with a church there. And we had an evening where we were each going to make like a, a food from our culture. So one of the women from our church brought salted beef. And she was going to make Jig's dinner. And they had wonderful Bahamian food. And as she took out the salted beef, you can actually get it in Bahamas, we discovered. And she was cooking it. And the women came up to her very concerned, the Bahamian women. And they said, oh, no. You forgot to soak the salt out of the beef. And so while they would eat this beef, they would actually soak it so the salt would all come out because the theory is that it was kept for the ships and so on and it was salty to preserve it. They would soak the salt out. And we said to them, oh no, we eat it this way. And they all looked at us like, Oh, that's alarming. And they, were, they found it too salty to eat. And it was so interesting. We told this story so often of these women saying, oh, you're supposed to take the salt out. Because for us, that just wasn't Jig's dinner. That just didn't make any sense. It wasn't Jig's dinner without the salt. Now, you probably know where I'm going with this. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. That's kind of how we feel about salt beef without the, without the salt. So we're like, what's the point in that? And, so, and he says that about us as followers, this implication that we're meant to be salty. And so when we think about the church, this is the, the connection that we're making, that the church is like this salt shaker where we're saying what it means is to bring this salt to the world. So what does that mean? Jesus said this as part of something called the Sermon on the Mount, which was his really famous sermon. It takes up a few pass, pass chapters in Matthew. And as we read it, we can picture who would have been listening to this sermon, right? There's all these people gathered around him that have been interested in this Jesus guy who's teaching. And so it would have been fishermen, it would have been people who were day laborers. It would have been women who worked all day at their home making food for their family. People with regular everyday lives. And they would have known that salt was very valuable. In fact, used for two things. It was used for preservative. Right, so the salt kept things from going bad. They would have salted their fish so it lasted longer. And the thing that we already mentioned, it makes stuff taste good. Right? Salt adds flavor. Salt was actually so valuable in the ancient world that it was sometimes used to pay people. Roman soldiers would sometimes be paid in salt because you could trade the salt for other things. And this is just a fun aside. It's where we get the word for salary. It comes from the Latin word for salt, which is sal. So that's just a fun little point. Whenever you think of salary, you can think of salt and how valuable it is. And Jesus says, we're called to be salt. So salt was pretty important. It looked after things, kept them edible and safe to eat, and it gave a special flavor. And so Jesus is like, you're like that. He's telling us that we are meant to be people, as we follow him, we're called to preserve the goodness in the world. We're those goodness preservers, and we're called to make things taste good to add the right sort of flavor. And he says if, you're, if you lose your saltiness, you're no good, that it's like Jig's dinner without the salt. And we can really struggle with that. Uh, a recent survey found, this is actually going to be shocking, that 64% of youth pastors that they surveyed said it was ethically wrong to share your faith. Now that might shock us, but when we look at our Canadian culture, we have become nervous and hesitant to put our values onto others, right? There is this sense of we shouldn't be pushy, we need to respect all people, and all of that makes sense. So we've become sometimes hesitant about what being salty can look like. But here you are on your 59th anniversary, and I suspect you desire to be salty in all the good ways, right? That you wish to do what God has for you to do. So what does that mean? And that's what we're going to talk about. So now I'm getting a bit nervous about what slides I remember saying. Good. Okay, I remember the right one. Speaking to me, Flint. So I don't know if you can tell what this is. My mother collects salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> this is uh, the china cabinet in my mother's house with a whole lot of salt and pepper shakers, if you can't tell. Now, when we were growing up, we were not allowed to touch the salt and pepper shakers. So there's this glass in front of them. Can you see the, why it's a bit... Um, Reflective. So there was this glass because, you know, and my mother also claims it makes them 
have to be dusted less often. So there's this glass in front of these salt and pepper shakers. And I want to say that sometimes the church acts like my mother's salt and pepper shaker cabinet. And that is that we are like behind a glass, by which I mean we're waiting for people to come to us. So the first thing that we want to do, I think when we think about what it means to be salty, is we get out from behind the glass. And I meant to bring this bag with me when I came up. You see, I'm having moments here. So let me just give you a little example of what I mean and how often the church does this. So I want you to think about us, people. Here's some people, my little friends here, right? So here's the people. We'll put a few of them out. I've got a few friends here hanging out. And then this is, uh, we're talking about the church being a salt shaker, and here's the church. But generally, this is kind of what it looks like. There's this separation between people and us, and we're waiting for people to come over here to enter our building, to sit with us, to engage with us. We do that with lots of good intentions. But the truth is, people just aren't showing up at church anymore. Maybe some of you are. I love the shift you've made here as a church to make that more accessible for people. But this has shifted. So what do you think, if you had to guess, I ask many churches this, the number one fast, excuse me, the fastest growing religion in Canada, according to our census data, is currently. 2021 census data, what's the fastest growing religion? Most people guess Islam, which is growing, which grew about 1%. The one that grew 10% and has grown 20% since 2001 is none. So currently on the census data, people can click no religion. And in 2021, 34.9% of Canadians said they were no religion. And that's risen 20% in 20 years. That's astronomical growth, friends. That's a third of people saying, I'm nothing. I don't, I don't adhere to any religion. Now, studies, we call these people the nuns. Sometimes they're nuns, and sometimes nuns are duns. So we call them the nuns and duns. So nuns are no religion, but some of those nuns are duns. They did have interest in religion, but they've left the church. And almost every one of you here will know people, and all, all of you here will know people in all those categories. Some of them are your family members. They'll say, I'm a done, I'm not interested in the church because of all the things that have happened there, the history, hesitancy for so many reasons, sometimes some of these salt issues. And so what we also know about this group is that this group doesn't say they're against God. Studies show that they're actually, they'll often say, I'm spiritual but not religious. So there is a longing for something beyond themselves, but this idea that people will just show up and we'll keep doing what we've always done. They'll walk in our doors, and then they'll find God, and we'll be able to do things like we used to do, and, and it'll look as good as we remember. That has changed. And so when we talk about being a salty church, getting out behind the glass, I want to explain what I mean by this. A little less one thing, and a little more another thing. So getting outside the glass is a little less, come here, we're here, and a little more, be there, be where people are. Engage with them, engaging in your neighborhood. A little less outreach, we're reaching out, and a little more in-break that we're in and we're with you. And a little less attractional, which is come here, look how great we are, and a little more incarnational, which is what Jesus did when he came to earth. In that incarnation is that theological word for Christ coming and living among us, God becoming human. And so we incarnate the gospel, we say. So now I know that you do this space where you chat. So this is where we're going to pause and chat. Are you ready to turn around and talk in your tables? You ready? Okay. I would like you to share, I didn't write it out, about a nun or a dun in your life and why they do not go to church. Can you share that for a moment? So gather and think about a nun. I don't ask you to tell everyone's personal intimate details with people at your table. Do you know a nun or a dun? Why are they saying, I'm not interested in walking in a church door? Okay, go ahead. Do you is this how it works? You just kind of chat? Okay, great, go ahead. We'll give you a couple minutes to do that.
I'll give you about one more minute with this question. So if there's someone wanting a turn who hasn't shared, please do. So let's finish up that final thought, and you can come back to this question as well. So just raise your hands if you had someone in your life that you could think of that is pretty hesitant to come in a church building. Most of us, right? And so when we think about being salt, this is why we want to think about beyond the glass, beyond being in the China here, and this is a beautiful gathering. But there's an and there. And what will it look like to open that glass cabinet and let the salt shakers out so we can all play with them? Which now my mother lets the grandchildren do. <laughs> Is, all the grandparents are like, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, we get it. So the role of what happens in, as we talk about being salt doesn't start always in here. It also has to be out there in the places where God has placed us. And I want to say that my absolute certainty is that you're already doing it. You're already salt of where you live, and you work where you work, and you serve where you serve. In your neighborhood, and you chat with your neighbors, and you're walking around, you're walking your dog, you're talking to people. You're salt when you're volunteering. You're salt when you're with your family. As soon as we leave this space, the salt goes with us. And that's where we're looking to continue to serve God. And Jesus did this all the time, right? He was always engaging and with people and understanding what was going on with them and engaging with their lives and their reality. That was the incarnation. And so we want to remember to get out from behind the glass. And the second thing I want us to think about is that we want to sprinkle and not dump. So sometimes, that might be a weird way to say it, but some, you know, if you've ever had salt, right, sometimes what we do with people is it's sort of like we take a salt shake and we just dump the whole thing on top of them, and you can just picture that just flowing all over there. It's a little bit stuck here today, but, and it's just sort of, it almost makes people gag. Uh, a number of years ago, my roommate was going to make gingerbread, and she mixed up the salt and the sugar. Have you ever done this in a recipe? It was Horrific. Right? It was absolutely inedible. It was unbearable to eat with so much salt. But if there hadn't been some salt, it would have been also unpleasant. Now, I'm wondering if you can think in your head, you don't need to answer me, if you've ever had the experience of a well-meaning Christian sort of dumping salt on you. And it sort of feels like, Ugh, this is a little bit too much. It can feel really hard. And so, interestingly enough, if you go back to those questions with your nuns and duns, a lot of people today have religious hypertension. And what I mean by that is they're, they're, so, they, they're so burnt out on religion, they've been so burned by religion or the church, or sometimes even just their impression of the church and the media, that even a little bit of salt makes their heart act up. It makes them gag. It makes them go, oh, oh, it's too much. And that can be a difficult thing. And so they're not eager to trust the church again. And this is where I think we can start thinking about what's our role then. And I once heard someone talk about the role in scripture of prophet and priests. And these are two roles that get talked about a lot in the Old Testament, which is the first section of scripture before Jesus came in particular. Priests were the people that did the religious practices. They were people within the community that helped guide people to God. They were their connection point to God. The prophets were also part of the community, but they were the voices that were saying, you've missed God. You've blown it. When you read the prophets in the Old Testament, there's a whole bunch of them in a row. Usually people didn't always like them much. The prophets were very outspoken, and they were saying things people didn't always want to hear. And what I heard this person say that I thought was so powerful was he said, too often we act like priests to the church and prophets to the world, and we need it to be the other way around. So just stop and think about that for a second. We're priests to the church, prophets to the world, 
And to be salt, we may need to be the other way around, by which we mean we care for each other really, really well. We love each other. We should do that still. And then when we get out in culture, we want everyone to listen to our point of view. Here's what we have to say. Let me speak into the things you're doing that are wrong. Let me tell you all these things that we, that we want you to take seriously about us. What would it look like if we flipped that a bit and we started to act like priests to our world in order to earn the place of being a prophet, right? And then we can call, and then we have that role in here of calling each other out. And so what, what I mean by that is, by priest and prophet, if these type of verses come to mind, right? First Peter 2 and 12 says, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits you. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Right? You're out there, and you're someone that people go, I see something special about you. Do not worry, it even says. Preach and push and challenge. And they're both needed in so many ways. But when we're thinking about how we can avoid looking like we're just absolutely making people gag on our saltiness, we can start by thinking about living in this role of priest. And I think that's important because a lot of us are really scared to be salt, right? Because we see this. We know. We say, I don't want to turn people off. I don't want to come across like those, have you ever felt this way? I don't want to look like those Christians. I, I want my friends not to be scared of me. And we're so hesitant that we're thinking, well, how am I even going to do this? But yet there's ways to do that that I think matter. So I'm going to invite you to get back to your table and chat again. And I'm going to invite you to talk about this concept. What would it look like to be priests to our world as a church and in your own lives? So priests, or whatever else may come to your mind. So gather again, what does being priests in your world look like? So again, one more minute. 
And when you're done, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to yell out a couple ideas, too. So if someone from your table wants to share one thought, you can be ready for that. <laughs> so I'd love to hear anything. Anyone, just a couple tables want to share, how can we have that role of priests as we seek to be that salt and light to our world. Any quick, short answers? Let's start with this side. So someone on this side, what's a way to be that presence in our world? Some people here have heard me say this before, uh, but uh, it's a quote I love. It says, listening looks so much like loving that to the average person, they're indistinguishable. That's so beautiful. Listening. I love that. Yeah, that's so meaningful. And so often, and listening without an agenda, I think too, right? Because so often we're like, why don't you go to church? Well, da, 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 da. let me tell you about my church. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. That's not the case. You know, we jump in. I actually gave our seniors an exercise when I was pastoring. We did this a couple times. And uh, they often would say, why aren't our grandkids going to church? And I gave them this questionnaire. It had five questions to ask their, their you know, teenage and young adult grandchildren why they weren't going. You know, why, why do you struggle with church? Why church? And I said, and you, you have one rule. You're not allowed to argue with anything they say. You, you ask, and then you say, thank you so much for sharing that with me. And you're done. You're not allowed to say, you should come to our church. We have a young pastor. You might like it. You're not allowed. And, and they said, I don't know if we can do it. And then they came back and they said, that was the best conversation we ever had with our grandchildren about faith. Thank you. And so listening means so much. How about the middle? What did you think about? Anyone from this section? How can we be priests? So she said, be caring and open to other ideas and welcoming. Thank you. Look like someone back here is going to share. Someone else want to comment? You talked about how praying for people, like offering to our God, is so magnificent. I pray for you. So she said, yeah, offering to pray for people. Can I pray for you? Love it. Okay, one more. Anyone over here want to share something they talked about? Go ahead. Uh, I, I think we're afraid to be priests to the rest of the world because we haven't learned to do it very well with one another. <laughs> Let's practice in here. <laughs> right? We haven't learned to be, so I just want to repeat in case anyone can't quite hear without you being Mike. We haven't learned to be priests to the rest of the world because we haven't always learned how to do it in here. You got some like fortune cookie speaking wisdom in this church. Like it's real good. Go ahead. I, I was just <laughs> Yeah. Being able to be there and just mm -hmm. care for them. Being present when there's a need or a tragedy. So um, a story from my life, and it's so interesting because I shared this story many years ago in a sermon, and now, years later, when I was thinking about it this week, I suddenly was like, oh my, there's an interesting end here. And I'm not saying it's always this cut and dry. But when my husband and I, uh, 20 years ago, first moved into our first house, we were very eager to get to know our neighbors. So we started hosting a neighborhood open house. And we would just put invitations in all the neighborhoods in, in, our, in our streets, in their mailbox, come for an open house, we want to get to know you. And we got to know our neighbors pretty well through the couple of years we lived there, in part with that party. And I remember telling this friend of mine who was a minister one day, oh, you know, going to get home, get ready for this neighborhood party. And I'm not judging this, but it's so interesting, this dynamic. And he said, oh, that's so cool. So like when they come, do you have a time where you stop and you give like a gospel message? And I said, 
no. And he looked a bit confused and he said, oh, so like, do you have like a handout, like a track to give them on the way home? And I said, no. And, and then he asked a couple more questions and, and I remember he finally said, then why do you do the party? And I said, because we want to hang out with people and get to know them. And it was confusing for him, this kind of agenda. And so we talked about that, and we, my husband and I remember we often reflected on that, like, oh, that was such an interesting statement that there had to be just such a clear, we are doing this in this way. And so I remember telling that story years ago at my church and just ending it there. And as I thought about it this week, I had this moment of thinking about that neighborhood. And I'm not saying this to be like, oh, you know, some, this always happens, but it's actually striking. So across the street from us, there was a girl who was about 10, became our babysitter. A few years later, she became a Christian. Start, she started coming to our church, became a Christian, is now attending that church that I pastored at, became a follower of Jesus. Over those next couple of years, I did funerals for the person's mother to my left, person across the ways to cross the street to the right, prayed with several of them. They came and asked me to be part of these things in their lives, did a baby dedication for one of them. And about four months ago, I was on the street, and actually the magazine that's back there has a picture of me talking to the guy because we were doing a photo shoot. And he's like, Leanne. And we, left, we moved from that house 10 years ago. We don't live in that house anymore, but we're still friends with many people there. But I hadn't seen this gentleman in a long time. And, uh, and he said, how are you? And you know, we got talking. And then he said, are you still the pastor at that Baptist church? I said, oh, I'm not anymore, but you know, you can still go. And he said, I think I'm going to go this Sunday. 20 years later. It's really interesting what God does when we say, maybe we don't need to always gag people, but we make space to get to know people and engage with them in those intentional ways. You are the salt of the earth. When we leave here, everybody steps out of a salt shaker and into a place of ministry, every single one of you. And we don't have to live in fear that we're going to do something terrible, that we're going to, you know, I, 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 could, I could be adding to that fear that, you know, we'll make people react dangerously. But we can share our faith in love as faithful ministers of the gospel through that loving presence and being ready, as scripture says, when we are asked to share our faith. And we need to do this because people need the message of Jesus, just like they did 59 years ago when this church started for that exact reason. Our world may be without religion, but they may be without, they're not without longing. And that's what we hope to help you with at the Canadian Baptist Frontier in Quebec. Now, some of you might not even realize what that you're a Baptist when you came in here today. I mean, the title is in the church, so it's a bit of a hint. But you may not have picked this church by any means because of its affiliation. But that's the family of churches that you're a part of. There's 308 of you, 308 churches, all over Ontario and Quebec. Quebec has our non-French-speaking churches. Our French-speaking churches are part of the French Union. There's 19 churches there that actually speak not just English, some speak Cantonese, Mandarin, Russian. We have 600 pastors, about half are retired, and we have different people that are leading and serving all throughout so many different places. Some of our churches are rural, some of them are urban, some of them are big, and some of them are small. Since I've started, I've spent most Sunday at a different church. This is the first one I've been at that has the tables like this. It's also the first one I've been at with an auxiliary percussion. That was awesome. <laughs> That was really cool. And this is what happens to me week after week, these beautiful pieces of the kingdom that are so unique and so precious in each place. And so without exaggeration, I've spent Sundays at churches of 10 in small rural congregations, and then I will be at Scarborough Chinese, which has four congregations meeting on a Sunday and 1,500 people. And I've gathered in churches at a Friendship House that meets in Brantford, which is a church. Actually, this, I guess that one technically uses tables. They meet on Fridays, and it's a church primarily for people who are on-housed, and they gather around a meal. And then the next week, you can be at First Baptist Brantford just up the road where the pastor wears full robes, does a full liturgy. They still have a choir, and they can look so different from each other. And every one of them is saying, what does it mean to be the salt of the earth? And CBOQ, our goal is to help you do that, to help you connect to other churches so you can learn from each other, grow and build, that we can move forward in a common mission together. And we say that our mission is a family of churches transformed by Christ, revealing God's kingdom. We want you to help reveal God's kingdom, which is code for being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. 
And we do that in practical ways, like we, you know, just logically we do things like provide pension and benefits for the pastors, which makes your lives easier. We have, we have lots of grant programs. We engage in church planting. We do things to help develop our pastors, develop our leaders. We have a revitalization program, which many of our churches have done, that are learning to engage in mission, the things that would help our churches to thrive. And that's important for us because we want to help our churches get out from behind the glass. And I invite you to think about how we can keep helping you, and I'll be here today and you can talk to me about that. But as I wind up what I'm going to say and then let you talk for a little bit more, um, there's one thing, as I mentioned, that Jig's dinner always did. It made me really thirsty, right? All afternoon, if you have Jig's dinner, you're like just drinking water over and over. It made me want to turn to water. And when we're salty, that's what we do for people. We help them recognize their thirst. Their thirst for living water. Their thirst for God. We don't want to soak out the salt of the church because we'd be missing something. And so I'll invite you to turn back to your tables and simply ask, what's one takeaway from today for your church on your 59th anniversary? Let's go back from there, and then I'll hand it back to Ken. And then they'll just go into the instrumental, right, Ken? And then I'll just go into the instrumental. Okay, great. Are you Lucy? Yeah. So just when you think it's time, you can start. I'll just give you a thumbs up, and you can just go into the piano. Mm -hmm. few moments. To, well, Lucy will play as we take a moment to reflect and transition. Thanks for your discussion today. You know, I, coming back to you know, the takeaway for me is just uh, being reminded of our neighbors. And you know, one of the things that they said when we, when we actually went there was that
Well, thank you so much, Leanne, for uh, sharing with us today what it means to be a salt shaker church. Oh, but she took her, her little people away here. I thought that was great. Thank you again. Um, at this point in time, uh, with this being our um, 59th anniversary, we thought um, that it would be a great time for us to just renew together the purpose for which we are here as a church. You know, this church covenant uh, in, that we have um, as part of our membership, um, you know, is, is a covenant that we've, we've agreed to together that represents who we are as a people. Um, this is the preamble to the, the covenant. I'm going to read it first, and then I'm going to ask you to stand with me and just to reaffirm this covenant together. The church covenant is intended to teach and remind us that as believers, we are united as one body. In Christ, we have responsibilities toward God and toward one another. And as we covenant together, we express our intentions to grow in our fulfillment of these responsibilities and our relationship one to another. And that's, that's a big part of what um, we were reminded of today about being salt shaker church is that, you know, to be salty, we need to be, be connected with God ourselves and connected with each other. To be the body of Christ, we need to be in that relationship with one another. So please stand with me now, and um, we will say together our church covenant, starting at that end of that first paragraph. Having been led by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, and having been led to participate in this congregation of believers, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly thoughtfully and joyfully enter into covenant one with another as one body in Christ. We intend to gather together regularly to worship and praise our God and to address him in prayer. We purpose to apply ourselves to learn and teach the scriptures and the truth pertaining to God and godliness. We promise to love one another, to support and encourage one another through prayer, friendship, courtesy, tolerance, forgiveness, and the loving use of the gifts God has given us. We will strive to witness for Jesus Christ in the world and in lifestyle and to work together to bring people to Christ in our communities and in all the world. We will endeavor to be faithful stewards of all that God entrusts, to give our time, money, abilities, and spiritual gifts for the support of this church. We will attempt to do all we can to care for the poor and oppressed, to alleviate suffering, and to speak and work toward justice for all. When we move from this place, we will unite with some other congregation of believers where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant, the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Be wise in the ways you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Will you stand and sing with us? Amen. Let's proclaim the goodness and faithfulness of God as we sing this song. I 
been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up. All my life, all my life, life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God all my life. You are faithful. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Let's sing that one more time All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God You may be seated. Oh, it's been a great morning, hasn't it? Amen. Oh, God is so, so good. That song has been going through my head all week long. <laughs> and and I uh, just been, thank you so much for leading us today, worship team. I appreciate it very much. There are a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, for those who may be available this week to help with the, um, the Youth Unlimited um, Youth Easter Dinner, um, please, there's still time for you to volunteer and talk to Yvonne Racker at uh, the, the uh, bridge uh, to help out, and that would be on um, Good Friday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So uh, please uh, get in touch with um, Yvonne this week if you're able to do so. Also, coming up this week on Good Friday, we are joining together with our sister churches from around the area here, our sister Baptist churches at Murray Street Baptist and, and um, Gilmore and Murray Street and Park Street and us will be there for that service and it'll be 10.30 a.m. So please uh, join us there if you're able to on uh, Friday morning. We also have our Easter service next week, and uh, we are having um, our uh, 
other organizations that are meeting in our building, uh, coming together for, for that service as well. Uh, we have the uh, Rest Place Ministries. Uh, David's here this morning. Uh, Pastor David uh, is, the, is here today. And will be joining us again next week with uh, the Rest Place bunch, as well as our Cantonese Fellowship will be joining us as well for that service that Sunday. So please come on out next Sunday as we celebrate together the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, we want to encourage you to mark on the calendar a April the 4th, which is our meeting of our uh, church, um, and the uh, bulletin, uh, uh, sorry, the report booklets uh, are available today for you to take home with you, and uh, if you need a hard copy of that, uh, please see them out in the foyer. Also, um, here, something special. Um, for those of you who have been following The Chosen and uh, know that season four has been out, it's been out in theaters already, it hasn't gone to live streaming yet because they've been making it available to churches to be able to stream that, or not stream, well, to present it. Um, and so we are going to be doing that. We're going to be having uh, Sunday, April the 21st, uh, will be the first showing of the episode uh, one of chapter of season four, and that'll be here at the church. It's free admission. You can invite your friends, family members. You can invite anybody to come. Um, we'll fill up the the seats around the tables. We'll probably have some popcorn or something. I don't know about that yet, but we'll see. Um, but uh, come uh, for that special. Um, kickoff to uh, the chosen starting april 21st also uh, we have coming up very soon on may the 4th mark this count a date on your calendar a spring cleanup bonanza boy bonanza that's going to be fun um here uh every spring we have a uh, cleanup and uh all hands on deck please for that if you can help us out that time so mark that on your calendar and now, I, this, this one here is a, a special one. What, it, what is an anniversary? What are some of the things that uh, we, we like to have on anniversaries? Um, cake. Yes, we're going to have a cake. <laughs> Susan's going to bring the cake in right now. We're not going to get to the cutting of the cake yet because I have one other announcement that I want to share with you today. And um, what other things happen at anniversaries? What other um, things show up usually? presents gifts and well we are you know the leadership of the church thought that this would be a great opportunity today um, you know Leanne shared with us how the the CBOQ um, is here for us to to uh, provide us with opportunities to have resources and one of the things that CBOQ uh, did recently was partner with an organization called Right Now Ministries to provide for pastors and also to get a good deal for churches on subscriptions to Right Now, Ministry, right Now Media. And what Right Now Media is, is a library of 25,000 video resources for the church and so the leadership our leadership team uh, our elders um, agreed that it would be a really good thing for us to do as a church is to get a subscription to right now media not just for the church but for every single member of our church and not just for that but every single member's families of the church and for those who are your neighbors who you'd like to reach out to and and bless them with a gift of resources Christian resources this is what we are giving to you today as a gift let me just run this this one minute video to just explain it a little bit more for you Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul 
as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Okay, so now this is how this will work for you. You will be receiving, if you are on our email list, our master email list for the church, you will be receiving this week from Right Now Media, it will, it will be um, under the name of Emerson Heights Baptist Church, and you will receive an email from them giving you a link to register for your free subscription. That's how this will come to you this week. So watch for that in your, your inbox this week and know that that's, that's coming from us, from um, Edmison Heights Baptist Church. So that's one way of doing it. If you're here today and you know that you're not on our email list already, we have a little card for you today. Um, and you actually, um, Ken uh, and um, helpers can uh, give them out right now. We're going to actually give each and every one of you this little card because you can not only use this yourself, but you can give this to another member of your family or to um, somebody that you would like to reach out to and, and give this gift of resources. And on the back is the QR code that they can just take and you can scan it um, with your phone and then it will lead you to the registration, um, the registration site that will take you right into our Edmison Heights um, resource library. So this is our gift as a church to each and every one of you today to celebrate our anniversary together. You know, this, this will be, you know, a couple weeks, uh, I guess in February, we targeted um, on that, um, that top, three top three to five list of what are the priorities that the church should be involved in in the next little while, one of them was, was discipleship. That was in the top three. And this is part of that vision for discipleship, giving you the resources that you will need to be able to your saltiness um, for Christ. So these are the announcements at this time. Uh, just uh, again, after the service today, if something has really touched you from the, ser if God has really touched you in the service today and you really would like to have prayer with somebody, we will have prayer available in our prayer room uh, right after the service today. So at this point, I'd like to invite up to the front three of our members of the church. Um, Betty and Ross Verner and John Hunter. Uh, John has been, is our longest serving member in terms of his involvement with the church here. And uh, Betty and Ross are, oh, just 
not too far behind in terms of the number of years that they've been here at the, at the church. So I'd invite you to come up because they're going to cut the cake for us today that we're going to, uh, to share in just a moment. And there's the official cut. All right. So now let us uh, stand together as we um, proclaim the benediction together. And then you can come up and, receive, and get a piece of cake and take it back to your table and enjoy. Okay? Let us say this benediction together from Jude chapter 1 verse 24 and 25 to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. And may God bless you and keep you, and may God's presence be just overflowing, bubbling up and overflowing in you as your salt and light in the world this week. God bless. <laughs>